Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. Today I'll be talking about NAS. Now before jumping into it, if you're new to my channel, welcome. Be sure to press the subscribe button down below. It'll make sure you guys always get notified every week when I release a new video. Now you're probably wondering what a NAS is. This video is gonna be part of a larger series of videos that I'll be making over the coming days. This is my first NAS. I haven't owned one before, so this whole experience is really new. And I wanted to document it and share it for those people who haven't used it before either. So a NAS is basically a box that has a bunch of different slots in it to put hard drives in. It's literally a computer that stays on all the time somewhere in your house that's plugged into your network. It stands for Network Attached Storage. There are a few analogies that I'm going to use that will help explain it, so just bear with me if you're new to the whole concept of a NAS. The first way to think of a NAS is like a personal cloud. More than likely, you've used a service like Google Drive, iCloud, Dropbox, anything like that to store your data. What you're actually doing is uploading your personal files to that company's computer. And not only that, but you're trusting that company to store it and make sure it stays safe. And definitely right now in 2019 and 2020, a big concern people have is data privacy. When you upload to services like Google Drive, they're more than likely going to be scraping your data for marketing and ads. And that's just one side of it. You're also trusting Google and Dropbox and all these other services to maintain your data. What if 10 years from now, one of these companies has a fire in one of their data centers or a catastrophic failure in their network somewhere? You never know what's going to happen. Your data is in their hands and if they decide one day to shut down their service or for example start charging money for a monthly service fee to hold your data, if you don't have enough space in your drive you already have to buy more storage for that. Those prices could change for all you know. So. Definitely so many other factors go into this. So what a NAS is, is basically your own personal cloud. You own the hardware that your data is being stored on. And not only that, but you can access it anywhere. So just like Google Drive, you go on your phone, download the app, you can access all your data. With your own NAS, you have that own flexibility, but you own everything from start to finish. And the next analogy I wanna use is think of a NAS like a super hyped up external hard drive. But instead of just being one external hard drive, there are a bunch of hard drives kind of mushed together into this one massive drive. Now the normal external hard drive is just one drive with a fixed amount of space. And when you fill that up, you have to replace it with a new drive and then keep buying more drives as you fill them up. On top of that, if one of those drives fails, you're losing all the information that was stored on that one drive. And most people, like myself up until now, I have just been buying more external hard drives whenever I fill my old ones up. And I've gained a collection of them over the years and they're getting really annoying to store. Now with the NAS, what's happening is you have multiple drives inserted into a computer. And what you're doing is setting something up called a RAID. I won't get into all the details of what RAIDs are, but think of it as having a bunch of hard drives and having a redundancy mechanism built right in. So if one of the drives fails, you could just replace it and you'll have all your data still. It'll automatically rebuild. An easy way to think about this is if you have a NAS of two drives, one drive will be your data drive and the other drive will be a mirror of the original drive. So you always have a second copy. Now, the cool thing about a NAS is you can keep adding to it. So if you buy a NAS of five slots, for example, you can just start with one or two drives and keep adding to them over time. And that way you don't have to worry about investing so much money right up front for a bunch of storage. You can literally just start with one drive and then keep adding to it over the years as you need more space. And the awesome part is that it'll just keep adding to the original volume. You don't have to worry about multiple hard drives, plugging one in, taking one out. It's all just one massive drive you keep adding to it. So that's basically what I had to do. I had to buy a NAS because my drives were full and I wanted something that was scalable over the long term. Now, even with all these pros, there are definitely some cons to think about as well. You have to invest quite a bit of money up front because you're not just buying an external hard drive, you're buying the casing for it that holds all the drives as well. And that by itself costs a lot of money. Then on top of that, you have to buy the individual drive that you'll be putting into the NAS itself. Then of course, you have to invest some time and effort into setting it up and maintaining it and just knowing how the overall system works. But again, you have privacy, you have scalability, and you have full control over your setup. So yeah, that's basically it for right now. This is part one of a larger series I'll be making. The next video will be talking about how to choose which NAS is right for you. There's definitely some cheaper ones out there that are perfect for most people, and there's more high-end ones out there that are good for video editors or photographers photographers and things like that. If you have any questions about what a NAS is, leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.